What up, y'all? It's your hometown hero, Scott Lane of Black Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. The Real Adam Coleman. So, you rock with your ID. So, um, man, it's been so much going on, man. I'm really excited about, you know, 2018, kicking it off, man. A lot of opportunities are opening up. And, you know, um, the guest I have with us today, I think, is really, um, this show is kind of a reflection of, of the growth, I think, of the urban apologetics movement, which I'm really excited about. You know, when I first started, um, you know, this podcast, uh, I really wasn't aware, you know, of a lot of folks who were addressing the types of issues uh, that we deal with here at True ID, but it's just really been exciting over the last year or so um, to, you know, see people just, you know, jumping into the mix, man, and um, and really getting some good ministry out there, answering a lot of questions and objections that have been, you know, circulating in the, the um the African American context as it pertains to apologetics and whatnot. So I'm just, it's just a really exciting time, man. I'm glad to be a part of it. You know, shout out to all the, uh, the listeners out there, man, who've been emailing me, man, I, just last week, I got an email from a brother and, um, out there in the UK, man, out there in the UK, he said, he's been checking out the show. He's been listening, you know, uh, for, for quite some time. And, um, he's actually inspired to start a, a UK version, I guess you could say, of what we're doing here at True ID, man. So, you know, the movement is is spreading, man. That's that's why I started the show. It's, it's, it's not about me, man. My goal was to um, provide information in such a way that we inspire people to go out there, you know, and minister, you know, through apologetics and whatnot. So I'm just excited to see that happening. And uh, the guest we have with us today is a reflection of that, man. Um, you know, he hit me up uh, a little bit ago and, you know, we got some things popping up that we're going to talk about here in a second. So in about a week, I'll be traveling to Illinois to kick it with my boy, Tim Allison. What's going on there, brother? Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. Definitely, uh, man, glad to be on the show, man. I kind of the honor, man, to be able to sit and chop it up with you for a bit. Oh man, no, no, it's all mine, brother. I'm excited, man. We got some things <laughs> planned, bro. Tell you know what's going on with you. Right, definitely, definitely. Oh man, so man, uh, just getting ready for uh, in February in about a week now. Getting ready to take off this uh, unapologetic, uh, unashamed, where we're really trying to tackle those issues that are like within our context that people struggle with. Uh, you know, embracing Christianity and embracing culture. I um, mm-hmm. feel like they have to vacillate between one or the other, but we want to be able to say that you can embrace who you are in Christ, and that really informs who you are culturally and just help people be able to work through that. So, man, just looking forward to having you down, man. Oh, man, I'm definitely looking forward to it, bro. It's, it's crazy. I didn't realize until like maybe a day or so. Y'all actually got me up there uh, speaking on Super Bowl Sunday, man. <laughs> right, right, you're right. I just noticed that too, man. Yeah. Uh, I said, oh man, it is Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> right, right, right. But we begin to end before uh, you know Brady and the Eagles or whatnot. But you, you in Chicago Bear t- territory, so I guess you don't really have a dog in the fight, right? Or yeah, no, man. I, was, no, I ain't got nobody in there, man. Um, and the way it's looking, it's like I'm having nobody in there for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I hate to say it, bro, but uh, you know, it's, it's looking kind of uh, tight out there in Chicago, bro. You're right. Out there in Chicago, you know. Yeah, so you know, tell the people about yourself, man. You know, tell us a little bit about, you know, um, you know, your ministry, how you got into the ministry and, and what you guys are all about. I uh yeah, so uh my my background in ministry is um I started preaching in uh two thousand and six and I served under my pastor who was also my father from two thousand six to two thousand eleven. And in 2010, my father became ill, and uh, eight months later, you know, he went home to be with the Lord. Uh, so mm-hmm. after serving just faithfully under him, doing whatever, whether it was preaching or cleaning toilets, um, I, I was just there to serve. Mm-hmm. And during that time, uh, the church and other people uh, to see the work that the Lord was doing, um, even in the midst of those tragic times. and 
they elected me to begin the pastor of the church in 2011. So been doing that since 2011, and here we are. Hey, Amen. That's all right, man. You know, um, you know, it's so interesting, man. Like, you know, I, anybody listening to the show, man, knows I, I can go off on the tangent like real easy. So, but you know, you talked about uh, servanthood, you know, servanthood. And just having like a servant's heart. And I think that's one thing that when it comes to apologetics, it's so easy to lose sight of that. I'm saying it's so easy to hop on a Facebook thread and just want to get in somebody or, you know, hit them with, you know, 50 different reasons why Jesus existed and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes we miss the fact that, you know, we're really out here to to serve people. You know what I'm saying? We're really out here to serve people. It's not just to beat people up with with uh, information, man. You know, that, that's really what it's about. I know that's a little, a little bit off topic, but, you know, um, with that being said, man, you know, um, when you hit me up a couple months ago, one thing that I found was really interesting was you talked about how your church is going through a transition of sorts. You know what I'm saying? You guys are moving from, you know, whatever it is that you were doing to being more focused. You know, talk, talk a, little bit, a little bit about that and what that transition looks like for you guys. Right. Um, so what so what was unique is that when um when I began pastoring, um, a couple of years into pastoring, I started to encounter things that, you know, that challenged my faith. That, uh, excuse me, challenged my faith, mm-hmm. um, in ways that hadn't been challenged before. Uh, mainly through uh videos and, and hearing side conversations and stuff. And it it, it caused me to have to uh, look at my faith in ways I hadn't uh, to objectively look at it. And, and really, I believe if you haven't objectively looked at something that you believe in, you really don't even know if you really believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was, I was working through, working through that and having to, was weird was I was having to preach on Sunday and then work with my doubts on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I, as I first scripture, I seen that, uh, Whenever there was doubt that God would give evidence, um, but I kind of kind of came over to the tradition that you know, hey, you don't question God and and you don't ask certain questions. So what I see now that I'm out of that period is that the Lord was allowing me to sit in the seat of a skeptic and be able to view it from that vantage point okay. um, in order to have a greater passion and a greater desire to reach those who are wrestling through the same things that I did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, man, you know, let's talk about that a little bit, right? Let's talk about that a little bit because um, in the background that I come from, it's, it's the same way. You know, you don't question God. You know, if you have doubts and it's, it's uh, you know, you're in sin and you, you, know, you need to get right, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, let's talk right. about, you know, what do you think? And I've heard this from people, you know, uh, people hit me up sometimes. You know, there's like this uh, element of shame, that people experience when they have questions or doubts. And as a result, they may keep things in, you know, rather than asking somebody for help, they might just keep it in thinking that they got to kind of, you know, pray their way through it or, you know, or risk being ashamed before the brethren. You know, did you, did you experience that yourself? Did you feel that you had to kind of keep it under wraps, so to speak? Uh, Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I definitely resonate with the shame and the guilt and, you know, wondering, you know, what's wrong with me. And, and uh, yeah, I definitely felt the weight of that during, uh, during that wrestle, uh, just because it, it, it wasn't accepted culture in that sense to ask certain questions or to uh, feel certain ways, um, you know, just, just believe or just pray about it or, um, you know, there's something wrong with you if you have certain uh, questions and doubts. So I definitely felt the weight of that shame and the weight of that guilt uh, that people feel, but the thing is, is that, and people are, whether we address it or not, people are silently suffering through these questions mm. and they need answers. Yeah. 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 You know, it's crazy, man. I was, um, once a month I teach this, uh, you know, Bible study. I do like an apologetic segment, um, in Richmond VA, uh, the no ceilings Bible study. Shout out to my people at no ceilings. What up, Corey Goss, you know, and, um, you know, one month I said it, it was totally off topic, you know, but I believe it was the Lord that had me to say it. We we're talking about the Apostle Paul, you know, and there's that passage where Paul is talking about how he had been preaching and, and you know, God was doing mighty things. But he actually went back to the brothers in Jerusalem to, you know, ask questions about the gospel to see if he was preaching correctly. 
know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Now, this is the Apostle Paul who wrote <laughs> you like over half of the New Testament, obviously. You know right. what I'm saying? And he had questions. And he had to go mm-hmm. back and make sure that he was straight. Now, if the Apostle Paul <laughs> can have questions, <laughs> right, then I think that right. we can allow ourselves, you know what I'm saying, to have questions, to experience doubt, and then to allow God to use that to chisel us, to, you know, mm-hmm. kind of use it as a... Um, like sandpaper to refine us and make us stronger in our relationship with him. And, you know, doubt can be a very uh, effective stepping stone towards a deeper level of faith in Christ. And I think that sometimes people miss out on that because they feel so ashamed that they're actually experiencing doubt when, you know, it it could very well be God just pushing you and stretching you towards something deeper with him, you know? And, um, you know, so for you, you know, like you said, um, you know, preaching on Sunday and then wrestling with your doubts, you know, on, you know, Monday through Saturday or whatever it may have been, you know, talk about that a little bit. I mean, did, was it kind of a situation? Did you feel like you were kind of being hypocritical? Like, or just kind of tell us about that experience right there. Yeah, that was really a, a, a tough time for me. Um, uh, shout out to my wife mm-hmm. who was there for me to walk me through like that period and to keep me encouraged and, uh, to keep me strengthened doing that, definitely. I'm like, man, how how can you do how can you do both? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and looking at scripture and seeing doubt express, seeing evidence given to doubt. Um, you see that with uh, Thomas. You see that uh, uh, with um, uh, John the Baptist. Excuse me, <laughs> where mm-hmm. uh, where they give evidence to to doubt. That was encouraging, but it was still difficult to to, to work through. Um, so, yeah, it was it was, re- it was a really weird time for me um, mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me ask you this, man, because one thing I think we've seen um, over the last, I'll say, you know, year, maybe year and a half, is I don't know if I would call it a trend, but you know, definitely the uh, appearance of this whole ex pastor you know, phenomena, you know, where somebody can release a video, whether it be a Kevin, have Kevin Wesley or uh Tamel Karango, I think is the brother's name. And you know, I don't necessarily want to even call these guys names out, but you know, you know, somebody can release a video six, seven minutes, just ranting against Christianity, ex pastor, so-and-so. And the next thing you know, this cat has got like, you know, 9,000 subscribers you know, on YouTube, you know, from, from your perspective, you know, being a pastor yourself, you know, what do you think, um, makes the difference between somebody who's in that form of leadership. Um, and I'll be, I'll be quite honest with you. Some of these folks, I really question if they was really pastors in the first place, because it, <clears throat> you know, I don't, you know, the evidence is kind of sketchy, but you know, that being said, you know, just taking people at their word, you know, what do you, what do you think would be, is the difference between that minister who experiences doubt and then comes to the other side of it, you know, renewed or rejuvenated in their faith with a stronger base of evidence versus the person who's in this, uh, position of leadership and then just walks away from, from Christ. Um, I think, I think there's, there's different layers to it. Um, some, some would, I, I would say would probably be in that same position of not able to get those questions answered. And when just anything that sounds uh, logical or gives peace to that moment or gives clarity to the, to the wrestle, even even if it's even if what gives clarity is me no longer believing, um, mm-hmm. I believe that that some some of it can be that, but then some of it can be uh, selfish gain. Uh, can see mm-hmm. opportunities in other ways in other places, and the, the 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 lens that I decided to look through, I think, is what makes the difference. So if I'm looking at a, if I'm looking at the lens of saying what I honestly want to know is what is true and that's mm-hmm. my objective and that's the lens that i look through mm-hmm. then i think it's going to produce a different result than if i'm bringing different baggage to wrestling through these doubts and these questions right right i agree i totally agree and, you know it's funny to me man because yeah you know, I, I said it jokingly i may have said it on the show before but um yeah looking at kevin wesley as an example like cats talk about christians you know particularly pastors you know scheming for money and all this kind of stuff i'm like look you can't look at a Kevin Wesley video without having about four or five ads pop up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he getting paid. Right, right. He got the Patreon account, you know, where he's taking donations. He's selling T-shirts. 
I'm like, fam, like, you know, this ex pastor, he man, this cat collected more tithes and offerings than a lot of pastors I know out here. You know what I'm saying? Like this cat's getting right, crazy. right, right. They, they started talking <laughs> about the church, you know, robbing people, man. It's just it's just crazy to me. It's crazy, you know. Right. You know, but like, you know, your ministry, man, and I could be um, you know, stating this wrong, but my understanding is that you guys I think you, you took a break and now you're coming back, like you're relaunching the church. Is that right? Uh, yeah, but uh, we didn't take a hard break. We took a soft break, which means that we just slowly walked through the process. Mm -hmm. We uh, wrestled with the idea of did we need to just completely bring everything to a stop or did we just need to faithfully walk, um, walk everyone through the process. And what we saw to be uh, the most faithful way to go about it is to just faithfully walk everyone um, through the process of change. Right. And, you know, so, and it was very interesting, man. So like in the change that you made, you know, um, I, I knew you were describing when you came back with like a, a renewed vision, like, you know, talk about that vision, you know, that, that you have for the church moving forward, because I think it's something that people need to hear. Right. And that's directly connected to the wrestle and the struggle that I had um, mm -hmm. personally. Um, and what I've seen was that was, that was for a larger scale. Um, it wasn't just for me. Like I stated earlier, I was allowed to sit in the seat of a skeptic um, to 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 not just uh, take things at face value, but understand the uh, the process of looking at these things objectively. And that that put me on a trajectory um, of, and, and, and in all honesty, it brought me to a place of where I had no choice but to let the infallible word of God be the complete, total, final authority in all matters uh, of my life. Amen. And I know it yeah. may sound weird to hear that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, no, like, no, no, yeah. uh, you know, like, what was it before? But I think we just grow in faithfulness. We have a desire to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And um, as we go through certain processes, we see what faithfulness looks like at that time. So I don't discredit anything um, prior. All of it was used to bring to, um, to faithfulness. Um, so within that, um, I was like, man, this is what we must project as a body. Um, that we must focus completely, our focus must be completely centered on Christ, um, the sufficiency of Christ, um, that scripture must be the final authority. And not only that, that we must engage the people that are around us. Um, no, and nowhere in Scripture does it tell people to come to us, but it does commission us to go to people. So that's what we did. So the way we, the way change happened was looking at the Scripture, mm -hmm. asking ourselves what the Scripture say, and then asking ourselves how do we faithfully live that out. And we took mm -hmm. it time. We, we took it probably about a year of working through that process and really that's 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 kind of the whole the whole gist of it right there of the change and we said okay we desire to put ourselves around people to build relationships to mm -hmm. engage our community to preach the message of Christ and that's where the church names come from out of Second Corinthians five where it talks about that since we are in Christ with new creatures and how all this comes from God, uh, all this uh, comes from uh, God working through Christ. And then he says that we've been entrusted with this ministry mm -hmm. of reconciliation. And that's mm -hmm. where our church name comes from, Reconciled Church, because we want to be able to stand and proclaim to all those who are sheep without a shepherd to be reconciled to God. Amen. Amen. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. And yeah, you know, I think you alluded to it, man. It just seems as though, uh, you know, for many black churches, yeah, it, it could be, you know, by black church, I mean churches that are predominantly black. People get on me about using that term. You know, it is what it is. But you know, folks, I think, know what, know what I mean. Uh, you, know, for, right. you know, black churches, man, it seems that there is a disconnect um, between the needs of the community and, you know, and the church. And, and what I mean by that is, you have these different uh, Afrocentric groups or, you know, you know, these uh, conscious community groups that are swirling about and, you know, churches aren't really speaking to these things and their members, you know, particularly the youth 
or going out, whether it be on social media or just somebody they know on the block, you know what I'm saying? And getting, you know, taken in by some of these groups, you know, um, from your perspective, you know, for, for maybe some pastors who might be listening out there right now, you know, how would you describe the responsibility that a pastor has to be addressing these um, conscious community groups and the types of things that, that we're going to be talking about at the Unapologetic Black Summit? Um, I think it is of, of high importance um, that we're able to um, address these issues because people are being bombarded with them. Now, what's the unique kind of in my context is like I'm not really in a, like an urban center, um, but what what I'm seeing here where we engage in is people are given enough information to to not fully fully adapt to any doctrine or anything of that sort, but it's enough just to look at the church side eye and say, mm -hmm. hold on, wait a minute. Um, so I think the, the, the apologetic, I know that we ought to contend for the faith um, from different false uh, religions and ideologies, but I think it's important for the people that we're ministering to for them when they are presented with this, because they're going to be presented with it, for them to have on the front end a framework to think through when they're confronted with this, um, as opposed to being blindsided and being presented with these things and having no idea, no defense, no understanding, and uh, it sounds good, it affirms my culture, it uh, affirms my value, and mm -hmm. uh, if I don't have a framework to think through that on the front end, then it's going to be difficult or more work to try to communicate that on the other end. Um, so I think we have, we have two, um, two brothers in our church now that are going through um, apologetic training. Um, okay. Shout out to Rob and Eric and another young lady who she's finishing up her master's degree right now, and she's in her last semester. And after that, um, she's going to also be going through um, apologetic trained as well too um, so that can be in the heartbeat in the life of my church because we see the need is so so heavy yeah man I, I think that's so crucial man that's that's a beautiful thing right there i mean really every church you know what i'm saying and I, i'm so glad you pointed out that it's not just urban areas you know what i'm saying but all of our churches need to have somebody who is well equipped in a in a christian apologetics and able to teach it to others able to equip the sheep because this is not like back in the day, man. This this isn't one of those things where, you know, Cash is going to go along with Christianity because it's grandma's religion. You know what I'm saying? They're looking at right. Dr. Umar Johnson or or Brother Polite or, you know, some of these Hebrew Israelites online. They're looking at this stuff on YouTube and they're like, you know, cool. I, I got these other options. I might roll this way or roll that way. And we've got to be able to give responses to some really good questions. Like it's not, you know, um, people have some real questions out there. You know what I'm saying? And we've got to be equipped, you know, to address these sorts of things, man. So I'm just excited to see, uh, you know, pastors like yourself. I mean, shout out to, of course, you know, Eric Mason, man, you know, who's, who's really sounding the alarm and this kind of stuff. Um, definitely, you know, Pastor Jerome Gay. Uh, shout out to yeah. Isaiah Robinson, man. You know, I'm going to be down there in uh, uh, yeah. Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, in a couple um, a couple of weeks after I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm going to be down there in Atlanta at the, uh, at the True Summit down there with Isaiah Robinson, Damon Richardson, we're going to be getting it in, man. And so it's just really exciting to see, you know, pastors, uh, you know, understanding the responsibility that they have to the flock. But, you know, interesting, I'm, I, I'm kind of asking for a selfish reason here, but like for myself, you know, um, you know, I'm deeply into apologetics, man. You know, what, what can I do to, um, I guess, maybe sound the alarm? Because I feel like we still have a good number of pastors who just aren't really getting it, aren't really seeing you know, the, the dangers out here that you're describing, you know, maybe, maybe something I can do on my end to articulate better to, to these kind of folks, the need for like, you know, for, you know, for somebody like myself, what do you think is the best way to approach maybe a local pastor or, or their own pastor? Let's say you're at, at, you know, at your church and you somebody like me, you want to approach your own pastor with these kind of things. What, what would you say is the best way to go about doing that? Uh, I think, I think first maybe have to uh, build a case for it. Um, if, mm -hmm. if, if there, if, if it, far from a pastor standpoint, you're, you're dealing with a lot and you're, 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 uh, and you're preparing a lot and you, you have a lot of focus and a lot of things on the table. 
And if something may not seem like a necessary need, you may not give as much attention to it. So it may not necessarily be that I don't feel like this is necessary in that sense. It may be in comparison to everything else I don't see as necessary. Um, so I think kind of building that case um, and, and maybe just sitting down and trying to have a just an honest and, and a non-judgmental conversation because I think we had a conversation mm-hmm. uh, someone could feel as if, like, uh, um, it may be coming off as if I'm not doing a good job and I'm not faithfully shepherding people. So just having an honest conversation and, and maybe from a personal standpoint of, like, maybe there's – I think in, uh, in all honesty, we've all had questions. We've all had to work through something. Mm-hmm. And maybe – being able to sit down and, 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 and come to your pastor and, and, and ask them to help you work through this and uh, kind of like building that case <clears throat> and showing the uh, the great need for it. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah that's, that's, that's probably the best thing I can think of here right, right, as far right. as from, from, from you. Like, man, just keep doing, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you, you see the, the, that, that urban apologetic movement like steady growing and steady yeah, um, yeah, expanding yeah. and steady great awareness that is coming to it. And I think that alone will catch the attention and communicate the great need uh, for it as well, too. Right, right, man. You know, people are hungry for it, man. Like, you know, when I first started doing this show and, and uh, you know, writing blogs, I, kind of, I started writing blogs right, right around the same time. And, uh, you know, I was out, you know, these are things I was interested in, but I wasn't really sure if, you know, anybody would care. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and record it. And, uh, you know, if it works out well, it's cool. If it don't, I'll just shut it down. You know what I mean? But, you know, uh, people are hungry for it, man. People are, are um, really desiring truth in a lot of areas where they ha- they've they been grappling with. And, and it's, it's uh, just refreshing to see folks stepping up to the plate, you know, um, all over the place, man. Shout out to Jude 3. You know what I'm saying shout out to my man uh Muhammad Tanzimore out there as well. A lot of people just you know, shout out to the whole Shield Squad. A lot of people doing good work out there, man. So um you know, so you know, with this conference, man, let's get back to that. You know, what was it what would you say was like the final straw that really just like, okay, for you was just like the light bulb goes off like, yo, we need to ha- to go ahead and have this conference and, and really, you know, speak to these issues. Right. Um just Constantly see like so. What I say is unique. Unique in my area is that it's it's it gives enough information for people to look at the church side eye, but not for them to actually adopt a a a, a certain different full ideology. So it's just it's just enough information. And to me, I was like, and the kind of zoning in and saying, well, what what's really going on? You know, what's what's really happening? And as, as I'm Listening to people, and I'm and I'm looking at things, I'm hearing things. Uh, I see that there was a huge, uh, a huge cultural identity thing that mm. that they were getting. That was what was enough. That perhaps um, they didn't feel like was being affirmed in Christianity. Mm. And so now, with the things that we struggle with, um, from slavery on to now, to Jim Crow and redlining and gentrification and all there's all these different things that we've been through as a people and still have to wrestle with this is at least affirming me as somebody it's giving me value it's giving mm-hmm. me dignity it's giving me worth and and i'm good with that and being looking at christianity as if it's a white man's religion and there's nothing in there for me um I, it was a burden like, now let's just yeah. help people work through these things. You know, let's, yeah. just, let's just let's help people work through these things, see the truth, and see the realities of of what it is that we believe. And then there's a lot of a lot of misinformation. I find that a lot of people, when they kind of turn around and clap back at the church, like they clapping back on things we don't even believe. Well, like so, it's like okay, man, maybe maybe there was something that you perhaps were missing or or wasn't being taught. I, I don't know, but let's just help people work through these things to see that. And that's why the, that's why the, kind of, that's why it's uh, titled unapologetically black and unashamedly Christian. Um, I, I, I have, I make no apologies to be who God created me to be, created to be um, mm-hmm. in his image and in his likeness. And mm-hmm. I'm a black man. And there's issues that I deal with that the gospel speaks to. And mm-hmm. I think that was another thing that really got me that, 
the things that were happening in our communities that other things were speaking to it, but oftentimes it felt like the church was silent, as if uh, there was no answer, but we owed all truth. So, that's right. like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to be black. I'm not apolog- apologizing for being black. That's who I am. And mm-hmm. uh, then on the other side, also, uh, when when you take that stance, it's almost like, how can you be black and be a Christian? Like, it's like those two, two, two things don't go together. Yeah, no, nah, my hope right. and my faith and my trust is when I push things to their logical end, I see that the only hope that I have for now and for the future is found in Christ and Christ alone. I ain't got no reason to be ashamed for that. So I'm gonna stand. Yeah. I'm gonna stand tall and say, "Listen, I'm a, I'm unapologetic about the way God created me, and I'm unashamed about the faith that I have in Him." All and right, bro. All just right to now. Give that, all right. <laughs> yeah, just to give that space to others to be able to stand and proclaim the same. Now, it's not to down anything or anybody else, but sure. what we've been through. Like that value and that dignity uh, must be affirmed, um, and that's what we want to do: is just preach the gospel clearly uh, to those things and give that same space right there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man, definitely. You know, it's just very interesting, man. You know what you said is that um, I think one of the most unfortunate, <laughs> you know, things I've had to deal with over the last two years is to some people you have to explain to them why urban apologetics is necessary. You know what I'm saying? And it's almost like, well. You know, it's, you, you get the response of, well, just don't worry about it. You know, people say, you know, is white man's religion. Nah, don't worry about it. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I'm glad you feel that way. You know, it may not be an issue for you, uh, but for some people, they're walking away from Christ on the basis of that. So we need to have responses. We need to have, you know, um, resources available, you know what I'm saying, so that people can dig in and have some some logical reasons as to why they hold to, you know, this faith that, that we hold to, man. You know, so, you know, um, kind of wrapping it up here, man, you know, like, you know, what do you, what are you looking to accomplish with the conference? You know, um, and, and uh, where do you see it kind of, uh, what do you kind of, what's your vision for the future as, you know, as this kind of conference kind of sparks off? Right. So, um, I definitely understand what you say, like people feel like there isn't a need and, and, and mm-hmm. why, and really when we cast this net out, that's what we cast it into. And we knew that. So we knew we were going to cast a net into why is this necessary, um, and and not not in a in a you know I don't want to do this and I don't care about this type of way, but just not understanding. You know, I, I don't see that. I don't I don't understand why there's a need. Right. Um, so we knew we, we knew we were going to cast um, into that. So as we want to live faithfully and say, okay, let us live missionally among people. Just being around people it gets you out of your Christian boat, and it puts you, it puts you around. It gives you a heart for people, and it puts you around these things, and you see the need for it. And what's cool is like lately, probably for like the last two or three weeks, I've been hearing more people come up to me and say, "I didn't even know," and we haven't even did it yet. <laughs> but <they're laughs> saying, "I didn't even know that I needed this." Wow, wow! Um, I didn't, I didn't know. I'm just now realizing. I'm seeing, and and also to see. People who are, we we say we're unapologetically black. To see people who, who look like me, who feel as if that's wrong to say, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, or even profess their Christianity. So we knew we were casting like into into all of that. Um, so this was the first phase. So really, this is the first phase of introducing the need and introducing introducing uh, the, the the great need for this. And this is what phase one is, is dealing with these topics, um, helping people to uh, invoke some conversation, have some real conversation, um, to free up people and say, it's okay. If you got some doubts, you got some questions, you got some issues, mm-hmm. you're looking at Christianity sideways, man, cool. All right, let's talk about it. You know, oh, um, right. you, might be coming, you might be coming every single Sunday. You might be coming to church every single Sunday and looking at it sideways. Like, no, we, we want to create a space to – help equip you on the front end and then give a space to help you work through these doubts and these questions on the back end as far as in the discipleship mode. Um, right, so that's what, right. that's what this, this first part was about. And then we planned on after building that, that, that platform of showing the need, then coming back even later on this year and putting something together that is uh, really target uh, specific things because what we're expecting to happen after this is uh, 
<laughs> what I what I say is people waking up, they're getting woke, man. <laughs> right, <laughs> I right, see okay, I see okay. the need for this, man, they're getting woke. Um that after that happens that now we can go to the next stage of kind of facilitating um some more uh some more things to kinda of help with the next level of stuff. Excellent, man. Excellent. You know, you know, actually I want to go back to something you said too, because um I had posted the uh the flyer for the unapology unapologetically black, unapologetically or excuse me, unashamedly Christian. Uh, for the for the event, and uh, actually, I did get the question. Somebody asked me, hit me up, up as to you know why would you need to say that you're unapologetically black? You know, like is if you know, like why does that need to be? Why is that an issue, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just so fascinating to me. And I, you know, I want to get a you know, I don't want you know throw the whole conference out there. You know what I mean? But you know, just to kind of give a tidbit. But you know, the the reality is this. You know, Christianity you know, has taken on um, a Europeanized cultural packaging, you know, for for such a long time in the West that the packaging for many people is indistinguishable from Christianity itself, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when somebody comes along and behaves in such a way that isn't aligned with that cultural packaging, you know, in the church setting, or whatever said it, then sometimes they're castigated as being as behaving in an unchristian manner when really all they're doing is they're behaving in a way that's not in line with that Europeanized cultural packaging that has been confused for being Christianity itself. Now, right. the problem is this, man, is that God has done a marvelous multi-ethnic work in the world, right? From the from the beginning mm-hmm. of the church till now. I mean, I'm talking about first generation Christianity. I'm saying you're already seeing cultural transformation. I'm saying when you look right. at the dynamic between the Jews and the Gentiles. You see what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you know, God has been moving multi-ethnically for the entirety of church history. But what happens is, you know, unfortunately, for those who want to conform Christianity into the European image, right? Whether Right. Intentionally or unintentionally. Right. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, what we're actually doing is we're depriving the church of the richness of its heritage. And I think that we actually end up hurting our witness when we do that. Right. And so that's why you have people say, well, Christianity is a white man's religion. Well, it's because it's been projected that way for so long. Right. You know, and so what we've got to do is as the church, we've got to reclaim that multi-ethnic heritage. We've got because that's something that God did. It wasn't our idea. I'm saying I believe God was very intentional about reaching out to all peoples, all nations, and so forth. And we've got to reclaim that in this day and time, or risk. You know what I'm saying you losing um, our our relevance in in some in some senses. You know what I'm saying. So that that's why it's necessary, man. Like you know whether somebody understands it or not. I'm at the point now. I just I just don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Like, like right. You know right. people ask me like you know. Why why are you always talking about race so much? Because ain't nobody else talk about it. <laughs> you know what I'm like that, that, I mean, it's really that simple. Like, I, I mean, people are getting confused. Like, I love apologetics. I'm, I'm just it's something that interests me. You know what I'm saying? But even before I was dealing with like race, I was into apologetics already. You know what I'm saying? I didn't set out to be the black apologist. <laughs> it's not what right, right, right. I'm saying it just so happens that I started seeing these issues, much as you know, as you did as well. And I realized that nobody was dealing with is, you know, and hey, once maybe once we nip this in the bud, I can move on to something else. But for right now, you know what I'm saying, this is where where the need is. And so whether people respect it or not, whether people appreciate it or not, we gotta put this work in, bro. Because people are dying. People are, are leaving the faith. You know what I'm saying? Spiritually and physically. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is a life and death issue. And we can't be um a slave to somebody else's perception of what's important or not. I'm saying we got to put right. this work in, you know. So you know, right. I, I don't know why I got off of that, man. I just had to had to say that a little bit. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I had no, to get in my soapbox no, a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good, man. And 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 it's and it's so true because at, at the end of the day, it's like, man, it's 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 not it's not about culture; it's an issue. It's it's about the gospel, and right. it's about people, um, the hurt that they're going through, the the pain that they're going through. The issues that they're going through, and this is just what what happens to be, um, you know, around us. And man, can we speak 
the gospel prophetic leads to these things, and that's the that's the main thing. Like that's that's what we're projecting. I think uh, sometimes it can get it can sound like something else, maybe. But at the end of the day, that's the heart of what it is. Yeah, but gotta respect it, man. Gotta respect that, man. You know. Yeah. So you know, as we as we uh, you know tighten out here, man. Um, as we roll out here, I mean. Uh, you know, you want to give us some final words, man, in preparation for the conference. Let people know when it's going down, um, how how they can uh, you know register or you know attend or what have you, man. So the conference is going. Oh, it's all February long, and the way that we're doing it is we're actually taking our Sunday morning to kind of deal with those issues. So uh, we kick off February fourth, which is next week at ten o'clock, uh, which you'll be our guest that day. And every single Sunday, that's how we're going to work it. 10 o'clock every Sunday, we're going to deal with uh, the idea of, can you be walking, be a Christian? Um, what does the Bible say about slavery? Uh, mm -hmm. The gospel is for all people. Um, and the Bible and what does the Bible say about justice? Um, so when we look at the injustice of the world, what does the Bible say about that? Mm -hmm. So that's how it's kicking off all February right here in Bloomington, Illinois, at Reconcile church that is 411 east mulberry in bloomington illinois so that's how it's going down and just looking forward to seeing it happen and for god to get the glory amen man you know, I'm, I'm excited about it man i will be uh getting up bright and early uh next saturday to get you know <laughs> catch get the flight to get out there with y'all man i'm excited about it man and um you know, definitely looking forward to uh, you know catching the bowl as well, Super Bowl as well. While I'm out there, hopefully it won't be right. too cold, man. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you, I, I ain't afraid to say, man. Y'all got me flying into Chi Town. I was a little shook about that, Joe, man. They wilding out there, bro. I was like, I don't know, man. Might well, uh, well, need to uh, try a different airport or something, man, a train or whatever. But you know, it, it's all good. It's all good. You know. Yeah, we got you, man. <laughs> I'm about to come out there, Joe, strap. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> hey, we're gonna hold you down, man. Yeah, appreciate, we got you. appreciate it. You know, but hey, man, for all the listeners out there, appreciate y'all. You know, thank you, man. You know, recently I've been getting a lot of emails. Um, just, you know, expressing that appreciation for the show. And it's really encouraging, man. I really appreciate you guys out there. I got to do a better job of <laughs> promoting myself. You know, the show's doing really well, man. But I'm going to, you know, make sure I start uh, actually promoting the joint. You know, it's been doing well just off word of mouth, man. But, you know, for anybody listening, you can definitely catch me at trueidpodcast.com. That's T-R-U-I-D podcast.com. We're also available on iTunes. And, uh, you know, definitely can sub subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel as well, man. And so, um, you know, definitely check out uh, the King Talks podcast as well, man. Shout out to my King Talks uh, podcast folks out there, Cliff Means and my man, Chris Broussard. Shout out to my man, Tim Stratton, you know, over there at freethinkingministries.com. Y'all can check us out there as well. Got a lot of great content, you know, with the squad out there, man. Shield Squad, what up? And uh, with that, man, just another episode in the books. Love y'all, man. Peace.